It's eight o'clock here in Pacific time, eight o'clock, 801, actually one minute after the hour. So shall we go ahead and start? I'm seeing heads nodding. All right, we'll go forward. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Um, well, first of all, thanks for coming. I know you're all over the world right now. And um, Catherine, um, what is your, we need a sign name for you, Catherine. We need one for you so that um, we can make this, uh, we can help, it helps push me. And um, for the rest of us, it pushes us um, to make this a really successful, engaging opportunity and we can push forward more. So thank you, Catherine, for all of what you do for this group. So also, um, I would also like to um, emphasize our code of conduct here today. So um, would you mind, um, well, let me back up a second. Um, there's a link. Catherine, would you mind sharing the link so that we can try to um, get your share, so you can share your screen and uh, I can share mine as well. And um, I'd like to be able to share my screen or I, I don't know how to really make it bigger. So it's, it's quite hard to see. So it would be better if we did that. Um, if we had two screens, like dual screens, if you could share the link to that so that I, um, I can share my screen and we can do a dual link kind of thing. Okay. okay. I shared the link in the chat, but you want me to share, to kind yes. of share my screen because with the link? Oh, no. Um, no, I guess, well, I, if you need to share your screen, let me know. Okay. So um, I think he was asking everybody to pull it up on their own. So we didn't have to oh, do okay. share screen. Okay. Yeah. Cause we decided that sharing, oops. It's yeah. difficult because then you don't see the interpreter misunderstood that. Thank you. Yeah. Got it now. All right. So um, if you need any help with Zoom or how to pin the interpreters or anything like that, let me know. And um, we need to, you know, do whatever we can to make this better. All right. Make this a great experience for everybody. So code of conduct. CNCF code of conduct is the one we use. And um, so we'll also put the link up in the chat for that too. And you should be able to see that on the agenda as well. Um, so let me know if you cannot. Um, of course, we're going to, you know, not do anything to um, be offensive to one another. And we're going to be respectful in our communication. Um, that is certainly one of our missions and our goals. Um, so everybody feel comfortable with the code of conduct. I, I just want to make sure I'm asking the right questions and moving along before, before I move along. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let me look at the agenda real quick. All right. So we are officially a working group now. So it's official. It's o H H W G. So Congratulations. Thank you for making this happen. Appreciate everybody's effort on this. And thank you, Jay and company, um, and for your support and leadership and um, for the CNCF support as well, especially uh, Catherine for helping so much. And um, I really didn't know how CNCF worked very well um, and all the processes and procedures. And Catherine's been extremely helpful. So thank you very much for that. And congratulations, everybody. Um, and I am the chair of the working group and, um, let's see, it's been about a two, it's a two year term. And so, um, after two years, we'll see who's next. And the co-chair is open so we can discuss that later. And Catherine is our facilitator and she's going to help guide us to the appropriate people and, um, make connections and know she knows everybody's names and all of the, all of the uh, information about that. So thank you again, Catherine, for all that. And have you been able to see the agenda? It's on Google Docs. Do you have access to that? Does everyone have access? Any problems accessing it? Okay, great. All right, let me know if you do have an issue and um, I'll help you get in. Um, It's, as I said, on Google Docs, and I can always um, move it over to GitHub if I need to. And um, 
it, ex it ex explains more of how you get your, um, how we're not sharing screen, but how you can get access to your, um, the information on your screen. So next month we will shift a bit and um, accommodate people's different, in different parts of the world. We're gonna try to um, shift a bit time zone wise to accommodate everyone. So it's not always hard for certain people. And looking at the agenda, Catherine and Destiny and I have um, looked at a few things and we documented um, some best practices, especially if you're hosting a technical conference and um, we have folks with different disabilities and who are deaf and involved in this. And um, obviously interpreters are pretty key. Closed captioners are important. Um, where you'll have a central room for everyone to network. Um, and how to welcome people to the conference. We'll of course have a form online. Folks can fill out their accommodation requests and their specific needs. And um, prior to, because we want everyone to be able to have access to that information and we want it to be open source. And so that other technology companies, um, you know, if they go to see CN CNCF, um, if they go someplace and they work for a private company, and I, I don't want it to be difficult for them to know what to do. I want them to have access to the information. I want it to be very accessible. So hopefully we can set up um, a budget as we move forward. And uh, I mean, we can do that next year and, and the year after not, we don't need to do it. Um, super fast and make a bunch of decisions on it today. I just want you to be considering it as we move forward and um, just have that in the back of your mind. And spread the word too, because I really want to encourage participation in CNCF. And um, Catherine, if you don't mind sharing the link to that, that direct link um, on GitHub, Okay, thanks. And um, if you're on GitHub, it's going to merge to the PRP um, prereq. Um, the pull request, the PR. Um, do you have a sign for it, um, Milad? Oh, pull request. Yeah, or um, I just use, you know, like I use a number of signs to use for to, to indicate pull request. Um, in America, I don't know what the, the, the gestural um, expression for that is. I know a lot of European signs, we borrow from them and vice versa. So I didn't know what the gestural um, word was for an international signer to use. I didn't know if you, if you use something different. Um, well, we kind of discuss what words we'll use and we use a lot of creativity and this is always sort of a learning process. Yeah, that's the same here in the United States too. Um, oh, and also with Python, like for example, when we talk about Python, um, one guy in Sweden uses um, a sign for it and he uses like a three on the chin. So I use that um, when I'm trying to speak more internationally as opposed to, we just use the sign for snake typically here in, these, in the States. But um, for international language purposes, I try to use um, the sign that they were using that they showed me. So where is that? Hold on one second. Can I just say one thing, Rob? I don't know. Oh, sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to be sure for everyone, the way we, the workflow works, right? So we have a lot of input from, we had a lot of input from Rob and Destiny uh, into this document uh, um, that I just shared on GitHub right now, right? So 
we want all the resources to be really to come and the recommendations to come from deaf and hard of hearing people. Um, so it is important for you as well, because not everyone needs to work on a particular document, but please read through the whole thing, right? Uh, maybe you have an idea or maybe something you don't, you disagree with that. You can either comment on GitHub if you're not familiar with GitHub. Uh, in the agenda, there is the link to uh, Google Docs. So make a comment there. Make sure you track it so we can see it, because right now everything is in, in GitHub. Uh, but the idea is not for this just to be the opinion of the people who let that resource. It is like one per, per, uh, person or a group of person kind of does the main work, but then you should kind of see and verify. And it, it should be like, we should have everyone's input. So. The question, like the request now is like, please take the time, read through it, give us your opinion. If you have another idea, if you disagree, please add all that. It should be our recommendation as a group, not someone from a small group. So it's important to have everyone's view because you might have different experiences or maybe you have a new idea or anything. So please uh, just wanted to make sure that everyone does that. And with that particular resource, it's a little bit more urgent just because we are making recommendations for conference organizers and KubeCon Chicago is coming up. I know the timeline is very short, <laughs> but uh, we want to share that with them and to see if they can implement some of these things because we're going to have Ian, uh, Rob and Destiny will be there and we want to be sure that they know what to do uh, when they have a deaf um, a member. So the sooner we can provide them with that, the better. Um, and but that uh, is the case for all resources right but i just wanted to really make sure that we get your feedback this is not perspective everyone's yes. yeah yes thank you rob okay so to answer your question emmanuel um the resources are certainly not going to be US specific. I want them to have a global perspective. So um, like some of you are in Europe and you do understand ASL better than um, some others or whatever. But um, also I wanna know, I want the diversity of our, you know, universal sign language to, to be here as well. And I don't want it to just be, you know, US and Canada are one little slice of the world using ASL and Europeans um, trying to get by with what we are, or that I don't want to be time zone, I want to be time zone sensitive as well. So I mean, we've got a lot of, a lot of languages and um, time zones and things like that going on. So I do want to try to do as much universal um, language as possible. And of course, um, feel free to um, add your opinion at any time, give us help with the signs, um, if, if you say ASL is fine, we'll, we'll do that. Um, or, um, British sign language, <laughs> you know, I'm teasing about that, but, um, yeah, let us know. Okay. And so, oh, so we also want to make sure there's, ha we have plenty of accessibility budgets for conferences. And so we need to figure out how to improve that because I, I don't think that's in existence today. So the whole point is to make it a great experience for everyone who goes to the conference. For accommodations and whatnot. Um, how it is that we make a great experience, I think is key to everyone um, and all of the conferences that we go to and we network at. And really, we want to improve our access to technology and people there is the key. Um, okay, tips to do Google Doc. Um, I will make changes in the Google Doc and we'll do the same thing in GitHub. Um, if you wanna look at the agenda, or if you also want to look at instructions on how to use GitHub, reach out to me on Slack. And I can teach you how to use GitHub. Or you can reach out to somebody else in the group and uh, maybe they can show you. 
Now I'm going to turn the time over to Catherine. I do believe that I'm done with my part. So Catherine, um, you can take the next section on the list. It says it says that it's your item. So <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, just I just posted the other uh, GitHub link there. So uh, Amy June was so kind to do some recommendations uh, on what you should do when you go to a conference that is not very accessible. So uh, I kind of asked her to do that after she gave such great feedback in our last meeting. I thought like, wow, this is awesome. I think we should also include a little bit of self-advocacy um, recommendations, because not everyone may kind of know how, how to do that. So I think like we need to um, educate conference organizers, uh, um, employers, um, the community in general, but we should also educate deaf and hard of hearing on how to better um, advocate for their own rights. I think that's that that's that's a really good um, addition. So check that out too. Uh, it's uh, much shorter document same thing it's on github as well the link for uh google uh the google doc is there as well so whatever you prefer please read it and add anything that you think is missing or whatever right like we would like to publish that as well because i think it's very important so a big thank you to amy june again okay uh and then um there are like some three little lists that I would like to point your attention again. Um, so uh, we have one document and this, this will also live on the website, right? We don't have anything published yet, but like we want these resources to be available for everyone in the uh, cloud native and open source community and beyond, right? We do not want to focus. We want to start making our name for ourselves at some point. We're new, right? But we want that any conference organizer from any part of the world and in any industry knows that there are resources there. It will take a little while, but that's our ambitious goal. Uh, and um, I think once people see the value in it, um, it I don't think it's completely crazy uh, to do that. Um, okay, so one, we have recommended agencies, freelancers, and vendors and tools, right? So our goal is to help them, be it like employers, conference organizers, uh, uh, or so on, help them help us or <laughs> our community, right? So uh, instead of our approach, instead of saying like uh, being angry about things that we don't have, <laughs> right, is uh, trying to focus on uh, or like the assumption or what we have seen is that a lot of people actually do want to help, right? But they don't know how, they don't know how. So let, let us give people the tools and make it as easy as possible to be more accessible. And to do that, if you have like a small or, uh, conference organizer and so on, like doing the research for interpreter agencies or captioning tools, that's a high burden specifically if it's new for you, right? So we want to make it as easy as possible. So let's have a list where we have like the best captioning tools, several agencies, uh, in-person, virtual, um, um, whatever tools that, that are necessary. Let's make it as easy as possible. Again, all of this is, is always going to be um, um, open source and people can add it. So not only us, but other people. Um, so it's really easy for anyone to 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 become more to be more accessible um and then we have a list and there are not enough people on there yet um so one thing that i would love to do is have a list of subject matter experts um who are deaf and hard of hearing right so of course we want to talk about accessibility and so on but we don't want to reduce our group or our community to talk only about accessibility. You're also engineers, right? So, and we want to normalize the fact that deaf and hard of hearing are also part of the discussion, right? So um, Rob, for example, is going to be moderating a panel discussion at Cube Crash, right? So it's not about accessibility. He just happens to be deaf, you know? That's kind of like the thing that we want to kind of have like these these um, make that more common. Um, and to do that, I would like to gather a list with 
people, their expertise. Um, I know that the CNCF PR team was interested in it. So I would like to give this to the PR team so they can see like, oh, if I need an expert in X, let me look if there is someone who's deaf or hard of hearing who can talk about that, I can talk about a reporter, participate in a panel. Once it's a little bigger, I would also like to just reach out to reporters. <laughs> so I don't know, I know a few reporters in the tech industry just because of my work. And I would like to recruit them as allies and ask them like, hey, help us, you know, help, help, help us, like give deaf and hard of hearing a bigger uh, a plat platform, right? So, um, but for, to, for, for doing that, we need to kind of have several uh, people in here who can kind of explain a little bit what they can talk about, right? Um, and then we have a list that, um, um, that Emmanuel, uh, started uh, about accessible tech conferences. So again, there that this is more for the audience. It's more deaf and hard of hearing, right? We have that as an audience as well. Uh, if you have any other, uh, if you know of any other conferences, or as you know more <laughs> conferences, please add them here. Again, we want to help deaf and hard of hearing as well to self advocate, to know which conferences to visit, and so on. So. Um, will be needing your input all the time. So those are the three lists. They are all linked in the agenda. So yeah, action, lots of action items for the group today. Um, and that's for me. So I think now it's up to Destiny. Okay. So, ha, ah, sorry, looking all over on my screen. Um, I do want to re-emphasize what Rob and Catherine said, that this is for everyone in the world. It doesn't matter where you're located, you can be a part of this. Your country, where you're at, it doesn't matter. Their language doesn't matter. Oh, hold on, looking where I'm at. Um, the recommended agencies, freelancers, vendors, Include them everywhere. They don't need to just be in the United States or in a certain state or whatever. The conferences aren't just in the United States or, or North America, you know, and U.S. and Canada, like Rob said. So I really, really want to emphasize that. So we want resources worldwide. And I did want to ask some questions before I started on my part. We need resources and volunteers for three documents. Um, I will ask you all, what's stopping you from contributing? Is it that you don't know how to use the Google Docs or you're kind of not sure about the content or you're unsure about contributing? We really want to encourage everybody to share their feedback, their opinion, their thoughts in Google Docs. So my question to you all now is, what's stopping you? Um, have have you looked at the working group docs? Rob says I have. Has everybody looked at them? Have you like have you gone in and seen them? Do you want to participate? Is the interpreter understanding my signing? <laughs> okay, Jay. Uh, he's like, yeah, I looked at some of the documents. A few of them I went through, but. Um, I, there's a lot of them to navigate, so it's it's really that I need to sit down and um look at them more. She said, Destiny says, so a little bit overwhelming. He's like, yeah, I'm finding the right time to go through and and sit down and do that. Destiny says, David, have you looked at them? Yeah, okay, all right. So then I'll ask you, what's stopping you? Does it feel overwhelming, or do you feel unsure? Milad's chiming in, but um, um, I actually have made a few comments on them here and there, just for the workers. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, Milad. Okay, thank you, thank you, David. Milad, go ahead. And he he says some of it was overwhelming, some of it bandwidth and time. Um, going through and reading all of that, finding enough free time for myself to do that. So like 
sometimes I'll think I'm going to do it on the weekend and the weekend comes and then I sit down and start looking at it and it's like, oh, wow, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> here. Um, what do I want to contribute? Um, what's a good, easy way to remember this? Um, yeah, maybe I was thinking that we could use like headers or things that are easier to follow, um, that were like interest categories potentially that might make it a little bit easier to jump through the document. Destiny says, okay, so um, if for example, I put a document with the questions, um, a subject then you uh, in Slack, then you all could focus on that and kind of chime in that way. Jay said, yeah, that could work. Okay. Destiny says, all right, I'll start doing that. I'll post questions in the Slack channel and then you all can just chime in when, if you have time, whether it's big or small, and then hopefully that will make it so the document doesn't feel so overwhelming. Yeah, I was just really curious about that because I'm like, I know deaf people are very active and very much want to participate and like to contribute, but then when everybody was quiet, it was perplexing for me. <laughs> okay, all right, going back to my list. I had three documents. We need volunteers um from our deaf hard of hearing group so you can share your ideas but we really yeah we want your ideas your thoughts feelings on um, our culture worldwide not just the us um if there is a certain sign for something if there are you know understanding diverse needs of deaf and hard of hearing individuals so that, you know, some of you don't sign, like just recently David was talking, that's all good. And we use the caption. I've put information in that document myself, but I do want your contributions as well. I want you to share your experience and your preferences so that we can all learn more about each other. Okay, so Practicing for successful sign language and English captioned meetings, like what we're in right now. Does anybody have any suggestions? Anybody feel like there are certain places that you can improve, share your thoughts, your opinions? What it is that we could do better to make this work for us and flow more smoothly? If you have ideas, share it in that document. Catherine, would you mind posting that? that second document in the chat, the best practices for successful, yeah, yeah, that one. So just for everybody's understanding, I uh, wanna make sure that you all can see me, um, but also hear the interpreters, see the interpreters, have the captioning working. Whatever your feedback input is, please share it in this document. And then we can also, share those best practices with other companies. So anybody who would like to work on other resources? Rob, myself, and Catherine were just talking about documents and we were feeling like um, people weren't necessarily chiming in on stuff, which is fine. If you feel like that's not your area of expertise or your wheelhouse, that's just fine. There might be another document that comes along that is. And that's actually it for me. So we're gonna, I will switch to Catherine, the professional channel, and we're gonna swap interpreters, so. Uh, great. Um, oh, Rob. Oh, um, a quick question also. Do we need to have any discussion points on the Slack channel or? Um, also on the GitHub issue for the different issues on documents or um, Milan, um, if you'd like to talk about the TLDR issues, um, we can do that too. The summer, if you would like to summarize that issue um, and then we can also um, talk about pull requests as well. Yeah, good idea, good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Catherine, on to you, thank you. Thank you, Destiny, I appreciate it. Um, and um, on to Catherine for the Slack channel information. Yeah, just going back to what Destiny was saying too, um, 
So first of all, if it's too much, just see, like, just pick one thing and focus on that and ignore everything else, right? Like if you see something that's interesting. One thing that I do, so I've been contributing, doing non-code contributions, which is, this is, right, uh, for three years now, I think. Um, so what I do personally, I, and you don't have to dedicate as much time as I do, but from nine to 10, I told my boss, I will start to work at 10. Nine to 10, it's CNCF stuff. And right now it's only this stuff. <laughs> so this is, this is, and I do it before work because once I get into work, it's like crazy, you know, like then I can forget about it. Uh, but that's how it works for me. You know, I dedicate a certain amount of time. It doesn't have to be five hours. It can be one hour. I think like one hour a week. Like, again, this is a volunteer-based group. Not everyone has to participate, right? We need people who are just part of the team and we need people who contribute. But if you if you want to contribute and time just goes away, you know, and you, you don't know when to fit it in, that's what worked for me well. I put it in my calendar and I usually do it early, but whatever works for you. So that's my strategy. Uh, and so you have to probably develop your own strategies to, to um, find a way, uh, a space for that. Um, and, but, and also um, we, I know we wanted to focus on where we will need work, but right now I think we should not be distracted. What we really need is feedback on the two PRs because we want to merge them as soon as possible. That. I think they're pretty ready. So it's just a matter of reading and seeing if you have, if you, if you agree, if you don't agree, maybe it's just a thumbs up. You just put a thumbs up and then we're happy. But we, I think I would be like the minimum that I would like to see is just like, I like this, right? Like some feedback. And if you have, if you have some ideas, even better. So I think let's get those two ready because we have two. And then once we have those, merged right when we have them on the website because we want them right now they're hidden in github we want them to be published then let's focus on the other ones but um uh, that uh, um, um destiny mentioned we also need to make um progress on those um, you can also do both at the same time but it, that may kind of uh be paralyzing um <laughs> okay so Talking about, because uh, I know there is a deaf professional Slack channel, uh, and I assume it is global or is it US based? Um, I think it's it it's a lot of US folks, but it's global. We have some people from like Sweden, for instance, or England. So we do have a few folks globally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe there are other things and Milan and other folks might might know like that are more um um Europe like more Europe fo focused or something so we can reach more people. But anyway, so we have there is a Slack channel with I, I assume lots of people. And not everyone sees every message, right? So you because I know we've posted there several times, but I think there's a huge pool of potential people in there. Uh so I was just thinking um, we should do this regularly, right? And then um, um, maybe instead of like, hey, join us, hey, join us, like, which may be a little boring, maybe just share little updates, right? When we have our recommendation for conferences, like share the excitement, hey, we did just did this, it's published here, do you wanna join? And with the information, maybe the video of the uh, work, uh, this meeting, um, but maybe do it on a monthly basis, really, right? So I think we want two things, right? We want people who participate in the group, but we also want uh, to be sure we have, um, we identify more Kubernetes experts. As I mentioned, that, that list is pretty small uh, and I'm sure there must be people in there. And uh, just having five, four or five people on that list is not enough because everyone has a different... Uh, uh, focus and experience. Um, so another call to action could be like, hey, we're trying to get um, deaf and hard of hearing people more uh, more exposure in media and so on. Are you interested? Are you a Kubernetes expert? Let us know and get let people just sign up for that list. You know, like they don't have to do, not everyone has to be as involved, come to the meetings and so on. So I think that would be important too. So I think 
yeah, if someone could post, I don't know who who is hands up, who is on that Slack channel? Okay, good. Great. So uh, yeah, maybe we could, well, first of all, do you like the idea? Do you think it's a good approach to do that regularly? Yeah. Um, I, I think it, it's great to have like information central there, you know, so yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. So maybe we can kind of just, so it's not always the same person. We just make turns and then like, say like, okay, um, uh, Jay is next and then Jay posts something. And if you need help with the messaging or like, if you're not really good at how to kind of, I'm more than happy to help. Um, so just, just let me know, but let's just make sure yeah, uh, just as we do with well. social media. Yeah. Just as we do with social media and I'm not like, we have to probably post something again very soon. We need to do con continuously. Like it's always about reminding people, right? All the time, remind, 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 like until it sticks. So, um, I think. And Catherine, um, she's the marketing person, you know, everyone. So um, it's no surprise here that she's reminding everybody via marketing to do that. So um, she has that expertise and that experience. So if we need help, we can always ask Catherine. Yes. And I want to emphasize that as well, Destiny saying. So um, if you're not sure how to say what you want to say, um, you can certainly ask for help. And, and Catherine's always so great about it. Um, okay, so I think that's all I had. And the next one is Rob Milan. <laughs> yeah, I'll let Milan go. Uh, yes, I have two topics I'd like to discuss. Um, it's more like questions, really. I just wanted to wonder, uh, I just was wondering about a couple of things that I just wanted to ask the group. So first of all, um, Is there some finances available or people interested in getting involved or people wanting to learn on um, the CNCF? Um, oh, the, the Kubernetes group. Um, what do you guys sign for that? We sign K8S, yeah. It's K8, K8, it's an abbreviation for it. Okay, Kubernetes, okay, great, good, nice to know that, thanks. All right, so um, who's interested in investing, um, like in terms of travel expenses, flight, hotel, et cetera, um, on, on that, how do we get involved in that? It, that's the question first. Um, do I need to stop and we can discuss that or move on to the second question as well? Okay, the second question is, um, so I was thinking and, you know, different people globally having a wealth of different experiences and wanting to get together one-on-one, -on -one, maybe weekly, monthly, however, we'd like to set that up or maybe just even one time for a half an hour to have a direct conversation with other deaf professionals, like a, you know, coffee or tea kind of meeting and, you know, just share backgrounds and experiences and um, knowledge, create some sort of relationship and have some direct cultural communication and, um, yeah, and have that um, on a global basis. So I, that's an idea. I don't know if everyone here would be interested in doing that. Um, and it would be deaf people directly speaking to other deaf people without interpreters. And I don't want, I don't know if the hearing people would like to join as well, um, but maybe you could observe and learn some more sign language or um, it's just an idea that I think might really help in terms of, you know, how you sign technical verbiage or um, just something to connect more deeply. Um, so those are my two questions. And the first question about, um, anybody know anything about the budget for travel? <laughs> okay, Catherine. Um, so you mean like for conferences, right? So this is the first time we actually did that. And well, actually Rob can talk to that because like he, he or, or Destiny, because um, they both got a scholarship for going to KubeCon, Chicago. 
So um, do you want to talk about, um, there is a little hiccup, but we don't have to talk about that. Uh, I think it will, it's it's all like uh, <laughs> going to be perfect. Uh, but do you want to uh, explain to uh, Milat and everyone else who's interested, like how how that works if you want to go to a conference? I don't know, Destiny or or Rob? Destiny, go ahead. Okay, um, we're talking about the scholarship? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so I applied, let's see. It was Kubicon and it was for Chicago and it's like November 6th through 9th, I think. Um, but I applied and it was fairly short process. It was not complicated. And I, you know, told them an estimate of what all of my travel expenses would be. And they gave me the scholarship. And so um, just yesterday I found out. So, um, and that's travel and accessibility to the KubeCon and the conference itself. They paid the conference itself as well. Yes. Um, flights, hotels, all of that. And then well, hotel, we're still on the wait and see. Yeah. At the transportation from the airport, you know, car or train or whatever we decided to do airport back. And that, that was it. So, um, that's it, I think, for now. I'm, I'm trying to see what else I can get. I'm trying to see if I can get more funding. And um, because I didn't really get enough, it's sort of a process. Yeah, and we're, we're in the process of learning how to do that. CNCF is learning as well. Yeah, so yeah, I applied. I got some scholarship money, and I was really excited about that. I was like, yay, woohoo. Um, but um, for now, I'm still navigating on the process, how to make it work, and... Mm -hmm. And I, we definitely need a little bit more funding um, yeah. for all of the co costs, including hotel, yeah. not just to so, try to get there. Oops. Just uh. oh, Catherine. No, I was just, uh, saying. I think there was like a miscommunication with the CNCF. So there is such thing as full scholarships, and I believe that Destiny and Rob will get that, which covers like well, you have to put like. A number like you have have to tell them how much money you need for the travel, and if your number is lower than what it is, then okay, that's tough luck, I guess. But so you have to make sure that you do that. But I believe we'll figure out next meeting. We will know more. But as far as I know, full scholarship is hotel and travel expenses, and of course food and everything, whatever is provided there. But you will have to, if you do want to do anything else, that's of course on you with the interpreter services that's something that's we are going to find out right because we will create this document so that's one of the uh like approach of creating a situation and then say like now we have to deal with it right so it's like we're gonna say we're gonna have three deaf uh um attendees here are the recommendations okay what are you gonna do about that so we'll figure out how that works uh we, we will let them know what we think is appropriate and then uh, it's going to be the first time for the CNCF, I believe. And after KubeCon, we will be able to tell you the share experience, how it was. Uh, but for that, we also want people to come over and over again. So we would love for the people in Europe um, to attend KubeCon or apply for the scholarship at uh, KubeCon Paris. And then that would be the second place. And hopefully... Um, I think Amy June said that like you do once, then you complain about the things that don't work well and next time it's better. So it's like, let's be there, all the coupons and it gets better and better over time. So that kind of, I think that's a good strategy and we have to expect it to be bumpy. The road is never even, right? Cause like people make mistakes, miscommunication, they don't really understand the needs, but, but overall the idea is that the experience gets better over time. Malad says, that's very clear. Thank you. And Destiny says, I just saw that Emmanuel posted in a chat that uh, she gave a talk last Thursday on captions. And then this Thursday is going to be doing one on AI and disability. And he said that in France, when you're a speaker, accommodation and transport are taken care of by the organizers of the event. I happen to feel like that's huge for accessibility because if a deaf person's new to that area, I think it's very difficult for us to deal, get transportation in place or figure out the bus system or Uber or that kind of thing, especially, you know, out of towners or out of 
country people. Like if I came to Paris, I think it would be very difficult for me to organize transportation and try to communicate with like taxi drivers or something like that. So I think adding that to it would be great. I'm not sure which document to add that to, but I think conferences, yeah, should add transportation to it. I personally think that for accessibility. Jay. Um, Jay says, yeah, so Catherine actually talked about that with the KubeCon conference. I So I'm curious because I, I know that there's a scholarship, but it's, it's kind of too late to apply. But I was curious about going and then um, it's now said, we don't know about the interpreter setup, but we don't know how that all was working out. So wanted to ask about that and Rob's like, they should. Well, I'm pretty sure there will be because I did I did tell one of the leadership of the CNCF, I said like, well, there is all these things that we need. So I did warn him and he said, it's fine. So it's like, but I'm just saying there is no process yet. They haven't received our communication. I'm pretty sure they will have interpreters. Uh, the question is like, will it be the way it's laid out uh, in the recommendations or not? So, and yeah, so it's like, I don't really know. I cannot make promises in that sense. I can just say that there is, so far there has been only positive feedback from the CNCF and uh, their leadership teams. Everyone is very excited about this initiative and so on. So. I would be very surprised if suddenly they would say, oh, no, we don't want to pay for this. That, that would be very weird, you know, and it would look very bad on them. So I, I'm yeah, pretty that, sure. And it would look bad, but it's also illegal. So then there's that on top of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. So, I, I did share some of my experience with AWS, the reinvention, or sorry, reinvent this year. That's going to actually be their seventh AWS reInvent. They have them annually, and it's taking place in Las Vegas. Every year, they get a little bit better and a little bit better, a little bit better. That first year, they didn't have enough interpreters, and they weren't great quality. The second year, it got better, better, better. So anyway, um, people fly into Las Vegas. They actually fly interpreters into Vegas, which I was like, Wait a second. If that's the case, I'll fly. I'll, let's fly in my preferred interpreters instead of just rando interpreters. Fly in preferred interpreters who I like to work with. So then they are like, okay, they did that. So now that's bit what's kind of been happening since year three. But again, yeah, got better and better and better. So I feel like CNCF, this is the first year. It's probably going to be kind of a disaster, but I doubt it'll be that bad. But it's not going to be your ideal experience. But this is the reason why we created this best practices for working with deaf and hard of hearing people for conferences. You know, we created this Google Doc and the GitHub Doc so that... They have this information, and I've used a lot of my experience from the AWS reInvent convention so that um, they have that information. But I want you all to share your experience, too, because you know oh, um, how important it is to have a knowledge base. And not just my knowledge, but all of your knowledge. So then other conferences going forward, whether it be CMCF or Apache or Databricks, whatever, some conference can look at it and follow that best practices and know that we're all going to have a similar experience when we go to these conferences. Nothing's going to be horrendous. <laughs> and we have, you know, our expectations will then be matched. And if I can add to that, it's like, hopefully, because we created like a best practices, it's going to be better than the first time AWS did it, just because we have now feedback, not from someone who thinks this is what deaf people or deaf and hard of hearing needs. No, this is deaf and hard of, uh, hard, uh, hard of hearing people themselves who said, this is what we need, right? 
this is why it's so important. We don't want to have hearing people determining what you need. You have to tell, and that's why it's important that you participate. We need you to tell everyone else what you need. Because what I, my experience so far interacting with the CNCF, there is a lot of willingness. And whatever happens that may not be great, it's probably not ill-intended. It's probably just because they didn't know. So the goal of this group is to educate them, educate other people's like, about your needs right and 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 yeah I, I i have my everything all my interactions with the cncf have only been excitement about this initiative and positive so i feel very um optimistic and i would be very surprised if suddenly someone i just cannot make i don't work for the cncf so that's why i'm not i cannot say like i can promise you x because i cannot i don't have any uh, I, I'm just a volunteer as you are, and all we can do is make recommendations. And but my feeling is that they are going to be taken seriously. Good to know. Okay. What about the other questions from Milan? Was um, I saw Milad wanted to say something? He says, "Yeah." First question, obviously, you know booking stuff, flights, things like that. Um, I think November, there's gonna be a conference in Chicago, right? Yes, it's in Chicago. Okay. Um, I Accommodations for deaf people for that, I, I'll share what I've learned. And then that can be kind of for next year in Paris. Um, we'll see how much we can, put together in the meantime, but I was thinking since that conference is happening in November, this would be good to have there. Hey, Rob says, we all have battle scars. <laughs> we'll have battle scars and ready for you and be able to tell the tale. Okay, so second question. I don't know what you all think about the meeting cadence once a month, what time we get together and meet. Um, is it going to be an hour? I, I mean, obviously, this doesn't have to get decided right now. We can have a conversation on Slack about it. But um, start time, end time, how long the meeting should go, the cadence. I did want to ask... Um, as more deaf people are joining the conversations, I think that's good. Um, CNCF doesn't mind us having these conversations and getting together and Rob's like, no. Okay, so, but will they help? Uh, uh, I'd like to help be able to plan for questions and things like that. Rob's like, that'd be great. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> You're welcome. I think our group is small now because we're just getting started. And there's an, there are other working groups that are like 300, 400 members. We're small, we just got started 12 to 15-ish, but that's how it goes. Um, numbers will come as we get moving along. And, you know, PR, pulling requirements, having uh, the chairperson delegate out and coming up with working subgroups, all of that good stuff will come in time. And our numbers will expand. And I'm excited about that. Uh, Destiny, you had something to say? She says, yes, thought just came to mind. How does the chair work with another group. So I know that we have this working group, but uh, let's say if Milad is in a different one or a, in Europe or what's your, what's your sign for Hungary? Hungary, Hungary. Okay, thank you for that. Um, if he's in a working group there, um, and I'm trying to formulate my thoughts. What's my question? Um, is it possible to have multiple working groups under one like umbrella working group as a, that 
has one chair. And Rob's like, absolutely, yeah. The chair can then help facilitate communication and coordinate. They are they are not the chair to be the end all be all decision maker, but rather help. Um, and also help with like code of conduct and that type of stuff. But if you want to have a subject matter expert in a specific area and and like come up with a working group subgroup for that area, that's fine. Destiny says that'd be great. We still have the main group, but then you could have different times for different meetings. Um, also working on one specific document and um, <laughs> and then also trying to figure out all the time zones, what would work together. Rob says, we can also work async on Slack and GitHub. It's always easier to work async. Somebody just throws in their idea and whenever it works for somebody else, they can chime in their thoughts. Yeah. That's kind of how global work goes these days. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you can contribute at any time. Yeah. We don't have to feel like we're crammed on a deadline or anything like that. Yeah, you can contribute at any time. That's good. Um, I know how that goes. And I also know that we're all busy and don't have much time. And we're a small group. But um, I was thinking, even when you have like five minutes to be able to chime in and answer some questions or do that, you, um, again, I am going to be posting questions on Slack for you all to be able to respond there. Hopefully that'll be able mm, to help us get more responses. It's really whatever it is that we can do to help this group function better together and work together. So I am perfectly fine with posting the questions in Slack and then you all can respond there. Both of the interpreters have a hard stop in like one minute and a half, by the way. Rob says, well, um, then before we close, we do have a hard stop in like a minute and a half. So um, any parting comments or questions, there will be a summary on the Google Doc. And again, I encourage you to participate. Catherine, anything you want to add before we close? No, just oh, like we, a big I know that we'll share this document uh, also as soon as CNCF KubeCon Paris form gets approved or whatnot, and that information gets shared with us, we'll share it on Slack. Yeah, the, the KubeCon Paris, we can continue, we can do that conversation on Slack. Just a huge shout out to Jay from New Zealand, which is, I don't know what time it is there, but what time is it there? 5 a.m. So it was 4 a.m. when he logged in. So thank you so much. <laughs> Oh yeah, coffee, smack in your face, <laughs> keep yourself awake. And and great meeting everyone. Like I love the, yeah, lots of interaction. It was a great meeting, loved it. All right, bye.